haven't seen the previous video in this series, follow the link on your screen or click the link in the description or pinned comment below. What is the purpose of celebrating the Passover? Some Hebrews say is the celebration of the death of African men, women, and children. The Passover is not the celebration of the killing of Egyptian babies and women. That's not what it is. It's the celebration of us being delivered from Egypt according to the narrative. That's what we're celebrating. That's the part that we're celebrating. That's what we're commemorating on the Passover, our deliverance. That's what I'm saying. I, I think that we have to recognize that um, it is, in my tradition, it would not be in my eyes to murder innocents. The Passover, it is literally, I know he's saying it's bigger than this, but it is the, they passed over Hebrew homes to kill, and some of them were children, let's be clear. Absolutely. Innocents, to kill the firstborn of the comedic people. To celebrate their murder, it does not sound to me like that is a moral act. What society does not celebrate the, the fall of, of their incidents? enemies? The fall of their enemies. What society the does not wait, do that? Wait, wait, wait. The reality is, it is a story about the murder of innocents who slept in their beds. So, and some of those innocents were children, and they were definitely people of African descent. What society does not celebrate that? I see monuments in Egypt where pharaohs built to celebrate the fact that they won wars, and in those wars they killed men, women, and children. Do you have a problem with that? Do you have a problem with that? Hold up a second. Nothing but the truth. <laughs> also, the title of this video is very misleading because all throughout it, both Jabari and Sanetar are coming at priest Daniel Allah. So take three shots, one for this video's misleading title, plus two more for the unfair tag team assault. I hope you can answer it. <clears throat> what is the purpose of celebrating the Passover? Some Hebrews say it is the celebration of the death of African men, women, and children. Do you agree or you don't agree? If they say that's what the Passover is, they that's say, not what they did. Well, they, 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 well, according they to say the, the purpose of it uh, is the celebration of the death of, of African people. Remember, of, of kill children. the firstborn. Okay. So yeah, kill, them, kill them. I yeah. don't deny that that's part of the narrative, a part of the story. Absolutely, so once that's you part know of, that that is, why are you celebrating the Passover, brother? Because it was the deliverance of my people from the Egyptians. So why would not celebrate my people being liberated from the Egyptians? Why would I not? Daniel Allah is right. The Bible repeatedly states that the Hebrews celebrated the Passover in commemoration of their deliverance from Egyptian bondage. Killing the firstborn among the Egyptians was simply how God ultimately accomplished this. So why would not celebrate my people being liberated from the Egyptians? Why would I not? Why would I not? Okay, so, so you do agree that it is the celebration of the death of African children. No, sir. It's the celebration of the Hebrews being delivered from the Egyptians, as Daniel Allah correctly stated. What you're trying to do is create a false narrative for the Passover celebration. In other words, you're lying on the Bible. And lying on the Bible is an automatic 10 shots. It tells Simple as you that. right in the book. I'm not saying it doesn't say that they died, but that's not what the celebration it is about. It specifically tells you in the Bible what the celebration is it about. It is a part. Be, it says because they smoke the Egyptians, and the we children. False. Nowhere in the Bible does it specifically state that the Hebrews celebrated the Passover because God smote the firstborn among the Egyptians. Deuteronomy 16 and 1 plainly says the Hebrews were instructed to celebrate the Passover because that's when God brought them out of Egypt. It says because they smoke the Egyptians, and the we children. 
and we left Egypt at the same time. See, this is the problem, Dad. You got to stop trying to sugarcoat. I'm not sugarcoat One nothing. about Tizora. Did I deny that they... If I call Tizora, he going to say, hell yeah. Well, wait, hold on a second. I celebrate it because of the so, death of... Did I tell you that. Did I First of all, sir, Daniel Allah is not trying to sugarcoat anything. He's simply telling you why the Hebrews celebrated the Passover and you refused to accept it. <laughs> Secondly, why Tazaryok says he celebrates the Passover is irrelevant. The Bible says the Hebrews were celebrating deliverance, not death. Did I deny no. that the narrative says that men, women, and no, children died? You, um, okay, what I'm saying to you is you the story is... The story the is... <laughs> nah. Yes, what, I'm saying, did, what I'm saying we to put you... You put a little fertilizer over the doo-doo, bro. That's no, all you're doing. No, not at all. Not at all. all what right. I'm saying is the story is greater than just that part. That's the part that happened at the very end. The story is greater than just, just that man. part. Exactly, Daniel Allah. Jabari and Sanetar are using the death of the firstborn Egyptians to create a false premise for the Passover celebration. This is a form of misdirection and it's worth another five shots. Go ahead, Jabari. I, I think that we have to recognize that um, it is, in my tradition, it would not be in Ma'at to murder innocents. Mm. It would not be. And and I think that it, and, I think that, and I think that and I think that the Passover, it is literally I know he's saying it's bigger than this, but it is the they passed over Hebrew homes to kill, and some of them were children, let's be clear. Absolutely. In a sense. To kill the firstborn of the Kemetic people. There you go again, romanticizing Kemet. Now you're claiming that in your tradition, Kemetic tradition, it would not be in Ma'at to murder innocents. What you're suggesting is that the gods in Kemetic tradition didn't murder innocents as the Bible God did. I guess you're forgetting the ancient Kemetic text known as the Book of the Heavenly Cow. It's found in a number of versions in royal tombs at Thebes and on the altar gilded shrine which covered the sarcophagus of Tutankhamun, Dynasty 18. According to this text, Ra sent the goddess Sekhmet to destroy all mortals who conspired to overthrow him. But Sekhmet grew so vicious, she indiscriminately massacred everyone in her path, including innocent children and babies, and drank their blood. When Ra saw that Sekhmet was on the verge of wiping out all of humanity, he ordered her to stop. But Sekhmet refused, having an unquenchable thirst for human blood. Ra then arranged for ochre to be mixed into 7,000 jugs of beer and poured over the earth. Sekhmet, thinking it was human blood, drank it and became so drunk she passed out. Thus, humanity was saved. And don't try to claim Sekhmet was one of those bad Egyptian deities that didn't follow Ma'at. Because Sekhmet was known by such titles as the protector of Ma'at and the one who loves Ma'at and who detests evil. So Jabari, it is in Ma'at to, as you would say, murder innocents in your tradition. Stop lying. And I think Come that on, in the Passover, it is literally, I know he's saying it's bigger than this, but it is the, they passed over Hebrew homes to kill, and some of them were children, let's be clear. Absolutely. Innocents, to kill the firstborn of the Kemetic people. Yet, Sekhmet didn't pass over anyone. She terminated countless innocents of all ages and birth orders with extreme prejudice on a global scale. But I don't see you on Sonnetter TV taking issue with these murders, Jabari. And don't try to say it's because the Egyptians viewed Sekhmet's killing spree allegorically. Because every year they celebrated humanity being saved from her bloodlust on a sacred day known as the Festival of Drunkenness. During this event, the Egyptians would reenact Sekhmet becoming intoxicated by drinking themselves into a drunken stupor just as she did. They would also dance frenziedly to music and engage in wild sex orgies. So let me make sure I understand this right. Your tradition celebrated a festival honoring a bloodthirsty goddess whose savagery nearly brought humanity to extinction, but your gripe is with the Hebrews' Passover celebration? Well, if that ain't the big fat pot calling the kettle black. But to continue to celebrate the murder of Africans, 
to me, is backwards for black people. It's like you're not even listening to Daniela. The Hebrews did not celebrate the murder of Africans. They celebrated being freed from Egyptian bondage. So take another five shots for being disodicant. Look it up. And I truly believe that this is one of the reasons why we end up in tension, right? <laughs> this is one of the reasons why we end up in tension. This fake laugh you always do. And I know it's fake because you turn it on and off like a faucet. It's even faker than Jimmy Fallon's laugh from The Tonight Show. <laughs> it's not a solid offer though, is it? No. <laughs> Special treat on garbage day, I, I drive in the car with him and we trail the garbage <laughs> trucks. <laughs> All the students, he filled his mouth with artificial blood and he spun back around again. He started spitting blood all over the classroom floor, oh all over the, the students' textbooks. His tongue was sticking out like a cobra. <laughs> the, uh, this, the kids were... Um, and I, I want to just be clear that anyone who celebrates that, I, I have to question their... Um, their morality, because I know that these these children, some of them were children, were babies, mm -hmm. did were not part of any anything that anyone did in the mm -hmm. story. Just like a lot of the people who segment killed were children and babies who were not a part of anything anyone did in that story. You know what they say about people who live in glass houses, Jabari. This is what I want to ask you, right? Mm -hmm. If I celebrated the killing of white people like Greeks, would I be wrong for that? If you were celebrating the killing of white babies, I would say yes. Because we have a holiday like that too, it's called dedication. I would, I would say that that was wrong. That, okay, that's so, not something that so, the comedic people would do. No, what the comedic people would do is celebrate a day honoring a vampiric goddess who had an insatiable taste for human blood. You make it seem as though it's just a story in the Bible where just, we just killed the Africans and the Egyptians. No, the, there was other instances where two nations went to war Men, women, and children died. This and is not going to war. This is not going I'm not to saying, war. Okay, they well, were sleeping in their beds. Okay. This is not going to okay, war. Right, right, right. Actually, the Hebrews were going to war on the Passover, Jabari. Deuteronomy 1 and 30 says, The Lord your God, which goeth before you, he shall fight for you according to all that he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. The Hebrew word translated fight in this verse is lachem. Now what's interesting about this word is that it's translated to war 10 times and make war 8 times in other places in the Old Testament. That means that Moses was telling the Hebrews in Deuteronomy 1 and 30 that God would go to war for them just as he did for them in Egypt. So the Passover was war between the Hebrews and the Egyptians and you and Sarnetzer get 5 shots for every time you say it wasn't in this video. So, okay, but what I'm saying to you is still, in all, there are many instances where the Israelites did go to war. This is not a story of war, you're correct. Where well, they went to war and they killed men, women, and children. No, he's not correct, Daniel Allah. The Passover is a story of war. That has been established. And I also want you to understand and that- And what society doesn't want celebrate you, wait, their victories on, of war? On, and on, in this war, is not, not women- It's not war, this is not war. Okay, but no. Yes, it is war. So why do you keep trying society? to equate it with war? Okay, I'm just using an example. It's a Men, bad example. Women and children die. Whether it's at war, whether the Most High came down and killed the firstborn. Men, but women, and children Allah, die. You know that wasn't Hold wrong, on a though. second. Except it was war, sir. Gee, M. Chrysler. What society does not celebrate the, the fall of their enemies? The fall of their enemies. What society the does not wait, do wait, that? Wait, 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 wait. See, he's conflating things. First of all. Daniel Allah doesn't have to conflate the Passover with war because it was war. Second of all, Sekhmet. Do I really need to point out the hypocrisy at this point? Okay, it was, okay, Listen I'm, I'm agreeing with doing. you. Listen, Listen I'm agreeing with doing. you. Listen, I'm agreeing with you that the story of Exodus is not about Daniel war. Allah, no, no, Daniel no, Allah, you gotta Daniel let me finish. Allah. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, let me I didn't know you weren't finished. I thought you finished Ask me a question. Go ahead. I understand that the Passover is not about war. Stop agreeing with him, Daniel Allah. The Passover is about war. What society does not celebrate that? I see monuments in Egypt where pharaohs built to celebrate the fact that they won wars and in those wars they killed men, women, and children. Do you have a problem with that? Do you have a problem with that? 
Number one, number one, once again, he's throwing litter on the field. No, I'm not. Because we're not talking about war. I bet you do, yeah. We're not talking about war. Yes, you are. And as many times as he's agreed it's not war, but then tried to use war as an example, he's doing that because he knows he's on shaky footing. Yeah. Daniel Allah isn't on shaky footing because it was war. So it's okay if children, women, and men die through war, but if it's the Passover, now it's, now, now it's bad. Because you're saying war and Passover is two different things. So bro. it's okay if we were not at war. So it's okay. The Passover. <sighs> I, I want you to know that we the, so the, the Passover is a celebration of the murder of innocents, and many of them we should know are babies because they're the firstborn. And understand that that actually means that we're celebrating people who were murdered in their beds. They did not have axes. They did not have swords. They did not have spears. They did not have bows and arrows. They were sleeping. Just like Segment murdered a lot of innocent children and babies who were sleeping in their beds when she nearly annihilated all of humanity. I can play that game too, Jabari. Let's not try to make this about war because this is not war. <sighs> Every single Hebrew Israelite that I see in our community, mm -hmm. black folk, they view it literally. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Absolutely. And if they are really celebrating the literal murder of black children, you have to wonder what kind of morality their tradition is teaching them. Why aren't you wondering about the kind of morality the Egyptian tradition taught black people with the festival of drunkenness celebration? I guess getting blackout drunk and having wild sex orgies aren't moral issues to you, Jabari. We have to recognize that there are moral traditions that should be the fiber of the African, that for tens of thousands of years we practice these traditions. The tradition that we are talking about that celebrates the murder of babies is not one of them. But the festival of drunkenness is though, right? Dude, shut up. Are there monuments? Kemet that were built by the pharaohs that celebrated victories of what you want to call combatants, one nation against another. Are there monuments mm. that demonstrate that? Combatants are not one nation against each other. Combatants are people who are on the field of war. But the combatants on the field of war represent the nations they fight for. This is why American soldiers wear American flags on their uniforms, Jabari. Psst, educated idiot. Daniel Allah is trying to call the Passover war. <laughs> he knows it's not war. It really doesn't matter what you say about Daniel Allah at this point, Jabari. Because if you asked a Hebrew back then what the Passover was, they would have told you. This war. is war. We are absolutely better than your straps up. And We're at war. So you better lace your straps up. He wants to talk about monuments to war. The question is not about war. The question is not about monuments. The question you. is about celebrations. I got you. Okay. And so he would like to muddy the field so much. I got you, Jabari. Brother, you're getting this work tonight. I see, you think <laughs> you're getting this work I, I, tonight. I think, I think the opposite. When you, when you go I home, you're going to take some Tylenol, some not Advil, or something. You're right about Daniel Allah needing some Tylenol or Advil after dealing with you. Because I get a headache just listening to your BS. The bottom line is, this was supposed to be a one-on-one -on -one debate between priest Daniel Allah and Jabari Osaze. But as usual, Sanetter jumps in to help fraud Mayweather. But it's okay because the good priest did more than hold his own. In fact, whenever I see a couple of lightweights like Jabari and Sanetter gang up against a Lion of Israel, it reminds me of this scene from The Lion King. Huh? Silence!